Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome. This is your girl, C. Wall, checking in for this week's edition of Coaching from the Couch. Listen, y'all. Did I, how many times have I told y'all? It's a couple things I tell y'all a lot, but I need to check on this. How many times do I tell you all that this is my absolute favorite day of the week? And why is that? It is because I get to talk DMV sports with my favorite people. That is why. And I see you all are already checking in. I see John Adams. Huge, all things DC sports fan. Of course, I see my mama because, of course, mom always watches the show. And I see you all checking in. Good evening. Good evening. Happy Thursday to everybody. The Seawall Chaplain and my brother Mazdak has checked in. Huge Washington football team fan, Damon has checked in. I'm gonna get I'm gonna try to get everybody. As you all check in, I'm really going to try to get everybody. Because listen, we go through this, these sports ups and downs together, and we have been going through this together for a lifetime, but <clears throat> on the show it's been since what, 2018, we've been going through this together? So listen, we're going to get it started here shortly. I want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to get on in the virtual room. Hope you're relaxing on the couch. And if you're listening in while you're driving, please drive safe. Cameron Mingo checking in, ready as always. Ready as always. I want to make sure you all are sharing the show. Make sure you're tagging your DC Sports, DMV Sports loving family and friends in the post, in the chat. Because listen, when is there a dull moment in DC Sports? When is there? Never. This week is no different. Now, I will say you all, it's been a little quiet been a little quiet just this week but let me tell y'all something let me let me get into this joke real quick let me let y'all get into this joke i was talking to all of our sister joy joy is checking in everybody say what's up to joy i was talking to her as i was prepping and planning for the show and i was like wow it's it's quiet it's quiet um, that's a good thing. I mean, there's always things to talk about, but I said, Hey, it's a little quiet. What should we talk about? So we started going down the list of everything we could potentially talk about. And we went through, of course, the mystics. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we got a mystics update, Nats, caps, but let me tell y'all something. Washington football team fans. And I'm gonna call joy out right here. Joy thinks she's slick. Because she loves to talk about the Washington football team. And she and she has helped me load, load up the runner show with mostly Washington football team topics. She thinks she's slick. She thinks she's slick, but she got me good on that one. I looked at it, and I was like, mostly Washington football topics. But it's all good, because we're going to always find something to talk about. Always find something to talk about. So, you all, let me know that you're here. Make sure you are clicking the like, the love button, the fire emojis and everything. And we're going to go ahead and get started. I already see Miss Tina checking in early. I'm glad I got you here for the whole time because I don't think you want to miss this. So, checking in first, the Mystics, Mystics, Washington Mystics update. Um... Here's one thing I think is so super dope. Make sure you all go online and check out the uh, uh, a ton of teams across the WNBA have new uniforms. The Mystics uniform, new uniforms are dope on their website. They're now referring to DC as the District of Change. 
And I thought that this was so, so dope. And Lash, I see you checking in. I thought this was so cool while it's on their website. And it says, we rise to the challenge to win not only on the court, but in our community. We rise for equality, for justice, and to champion inclusion for all. Honoring those that came before us and acknowledging the continued progress we must make, we are proud to present the Mystics 2021 Rebel Edition uniform. Let me tell y'all something. While y'all you on the show now, but as soon as you all finish and wrap up and watching the show and making all your comments and talking all this good sports talk, check out these uniforms. They are the bomb. And you all know what we have in Natasha Cloud and Elena Deladon and others on the team. I said, listen, they are leaders on this platform and I just love every single solitary thing about it. So check it out if you haven't gotten the opportunity to. Shout out to them. Love every single thing about it. The stitching and everything. It's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Here's one thing I don't think we mentioned on the show. And maybe we did. But I didn't remember. I think it's very important that Alicia Clark that had just... Started with the team. You all know she got injured. She's injured. Um, she got injured playing um, in France. So she is out for the season. Just last Friday, she had surgery on her right foot. The surgery was successful. But that was such a... We wish her a speedy recovery. But wow. That one hurt. That one hurt. We were expecting such great things of course, from Alicia, but we will not be able to see her on the court in a Mystics uniform because she's injured and out for the season. So we want to wish her well and a speedy recovery and, and, and we'll look out for her next season. So, Nats fans. Do we have any Nats fans checking in? The Nats finally able to play this week. Not much of an update from a Nats perspective, but Nats fans, I want you to check in to let me know you're here. Hey, listen, the baseball season is a long one. It's a long one. Um, some are already a bit pessimistic about how the season is starting. Um, some felt like, hey, the Nats could have easily swept the Braves earlier this week. They didn't. In the, in the, in the Braves and Nats series, they did not sweep them. Um, but I saw an interesting quote from Davey Martinez online that was shared. This quote was shared online in his post game zoom with reporters. And it was, it was in regards to how do you feel about how the first season started out? And Wallace, I see your comment about pitching going to be a problem for the Nats this season. And Davey, Davey's comment says, you can look at it both ways honestly the first game was kind of disappointing because we scored four runs in the first i agree with him absolutely but we're talking about a pretty good team over there he's referring to the to the braves you've got to play the whole game in the second game you get an unbelievable pitching performance and we just couldn't get anything going offensively so Exactly to the point of Davey Martinez, and I see what you have here, Wallace, in terms of not getting things going offensively. Strasburg was fine. Scherzer Scher and the others, they, they struggled. So it's still early. It's still early. The season is just starting. So I don't think there's any reason to panic. It's time to make it. You can make improvements. We know the baseball season is long. So we'll keep watching. We'll keep engaging and seeing what happens with the Nats season. But, hey, it, and it was also a depleted roster. We have to remember that, too. Um, keep all those things in mind. It's still early. They just getting started. But because they did get started this week, we got to bring them up. Got to bring them up. And, of course, we were seeing some negative feedback on the nets already and it's like wow they just started let, let's get it let's get it going so keep up hope keep the faith nothing to be concerned about so 
we're going to keep our eyes on the Nets as the season progresses, and we'll keep talking about them on the show as well. Want to say, say what's up? Mike Lyles has joined us just in time for the conversation on the Caps. So the Caps are playing the Boston Bruins right now. They're playing, they're playing, they're playing. Right now, I didn't want to necessarily talk about the Caps play. I wanted to shout the Caps out for their fundraising contributions. So I want to read this. I think it's important. And so... I really want to share this information because we always talk about the play, you know, the playing and the games. But as I've always said to you all, these teams do a lot in the community and they raise a lot of funds. And I think it's important to share that information. We're sharing the ups and the downs. They're always up when it comes to contributing to the community. So want to read this to you all so that you all are in the know and are aware what the Caps are doing. So the Caps and Monumental, they in their hockey fight um, cancer auction raised $68,345. So the proceeds benefit the Flashes of Hope, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, Make-A-Wish, and the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. So kudos to them. Kudos to them. Everybody, let's check in. Let's give them a love emoji, like a fire emoji, and just share that news because they're always contributing for sure to the community. And I think that is important to note and to share. And y'all know I, I'm big on community involvement and service and giving back. So when our teams are doing it, we got to shout them out and, and give them a hand clap when they're doing, when they're doing all those great things. So want to make sure, you know, we acknowledge that. And I'm also going to acknowledge someone that you all, another Seawall team member, my PR strategist has, has logged in. So you know what that means. I'm going to act like I don't cut up on the show. Nobody tell her that I cut up. So now listen, between my mama watching the show and then my PR strategist, Dr. Lee Lonnie Malin checking in, I have to act like I got sense all the time. So for the rest, how many more minutes we got in the show, y'all? Is it what? 16, 17, 18? We really got to act like we don't cut up too bad up in here. But anywho, we're moving on to the Wizards and she's giving me permission to cut up. Good, good. Thank you. Listen, Wizards fans, check in. Where are you? Wizards fans, check in. Check in, check in, check in. Wizards fans, is there one? Are there two? Are there 10? Come on, you all. Let's stick together. Let's stick this thing out. And while the Wizards fans are checking in, let me shout out the Triple W podcast. You can find the podcast on YouTube. You can find the podcast on Spotify. I have the pleasure of, of co-hosting along with three other of my Wizards media colleagues. And we just had a show. So we, we recorded Tuesday night. We, we posted the show and launched on Wednesday. So listen. And Cameron, you said I had, I had you yelling. Well, well listen. It was something. I, I have to admit. And all the shows are good. The show, all the shows are great. Um, we hadn't recorded in a bit because we were seeing a bit of the same old, same old. So I said, Hey, listen, let's, let's do, we're going to do the show. And then all the ladies, of course, all four of us. And we, it was a bit longer this episode because we were covering a lot of ground. This episode was also after that. Ooh, now the Wizards won last night. They won last night, but that gut-wrenching loss to the Raptors. Y'all know your girl almost lost it a little bit. And you all are going to tune in to the podcast. But one question I want to ask you all, and Cameron has already heard this because Cameron tunes into all of the podcasts and we appreciate him for that. It's what now? So listen, I can admit defeat. And I can admit when I am wrong and I was wrong 
about the wizard season, okay? Um, in that first episode of the Triple W podcast, I was like, oh, the wizard's about to be fifth in the East. Best backcourt, we 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 out we out here. That's not what it's looking like, you know. And um, that that's hey, it is what it is. But what I want to hear from you all, Wizards fans, is what now? What now? Um, as Cameron is sharing, and I know so many of you know tank for draft pick. And do all this. No, we're not. The, the team is not going to tank. Play the season out. Play it out. Keep going. Play it out. Play it out. Um, fight for whatever you can. Fight, fight for whatever you can. And Lash, I'm glad you, you admitted you were wrong too. I was we were wrong, my brother. We it was. It was it, because here's my thing, and I'm gonna go back to this. And I have to be careful in how I word this because this is not, I don't want to make it sound like it was a bad trade or it was Russell Westbrook's fault or anything like that. Here's what I'm saying. When you make a, a trade like you did, John Wall and Russell Westbrook, you're not making that trade because you want to anticipate rebuilding for the rest of the season. No, you make a trade like that when you are preparing and, and, and you are in a win now sort of mode. You want to make a statement in your conference. That did not transpire. No, the season isn't over and they should absolutely fight and keep playing this thing out. But I would hope that the front office is like, wait a second, because I, if if I'm Ted Leonsis and I was convinced to trade my at one point number one pick in the draft, the 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 player that I was going to groom to stay and retire, a Washington Wizard, I'm expecting results. You make a move like that. Results needs to come along with it. No results. Same old, same old. So what now? Wallace said, play it out and fire everybody. Any other comments? I, I, I see the comment, Wallace, about Rui. And we talked about Rui a bit on the Triple W podcast. So I want to make sure you all tune into that. I'm going to say something about Rui. I've actually been pretty impressed by Rui. Rui's swag, his, his, his complete swag has changed, in my opinion, as a result of leadership from Russell Westbrook. He's coming out of his shell, and, and, they're, and, they're, and they're, they're telling him to play. Hey, if, if Rui say that he can, if he can guard the one through five, then hey, Rui, get out here and you're going to guard the one through five. And that is what he does or tries to do. And, I, and I'm okay with that. I see a change in Rui, a positive change. I think that the player I, I'm, I'm a little worried about, even though I know he's just a rookie, is Denny. I expected more from Denny, but then it goes back to development and being underutilized. Um, and coaching, here's the thing, and you all have heard me say this before, you got to check the common denominator, and we're seeing the same result regardless of who's on the roster. What's, what is the common denominator then? You all can answer that question. I don't even have to answer it. I don't even have to answer that question. What is the common denominator regardless of who is on the roster? Y'all can answer that, okay? So, play the season out. No, do not tank. But this is not what was expected at all. So, there should absolutely be changes to the coaching staff. And, hey, listen, might need to be some, some changes in that front office as well. Because you can't, what have we been saying this for years? You can't keep swapping players in and out 
and getting the same result. That's the definition of insanity. And I'm not, we're not dealing with that, okay? We shall see what happens. We shall see what happens. Um, they can all keep fighting. The players have been injured. We've seen injuries come and go. Brad is actually still injured, but he made the decision to play last night. Um, Davis had a good game. Brad did. Russ did. The challenge is we don't see anyone other than Brad have a consistent game. And we all have talked about this. Y'all know this. We've talked about this and we've done this song and dance a lot. The thing of it is, all I'm going to keep saying is, what's the consistent factor? What is the common denominator? And then that is your answer. And yes, I had it in my notes. Jerome Robinson, he got released. Best of luck to him in all his endeavors. The Washington football team is up next. Washington football team fans, check in, please. Check in, please. I know you were waiting this whole entire time just to talk about the Washington football team. And, you know, when I was talking to Joy, when I was going through the run of show, again, I'm going to remind you all who are just joining I think Joy tried to trick me into talking about the Washington football team the whole time because I was struggling. I said, oh, man, it's actually been kind of quiet. What should, what should we be talking about this week? And next thing I know, Joy just started listing off a whole bunch of stuff from a Washington football team perspective. And I was like, girl, you're not going to load up my agenda on a whole bunch of Washington football team talk. But here we are. So. First up on the Washington football team, let us welcome to the area Natalia Durantes. Natalia Durantes, she is the new coordinator of football programs. Um, the first Latina in NFL history to serve in that position. This role is something like a chief of staff. Um, the team announced it on yesterday. So shout out to her. Welcome to her. I want to say this because I think it's so important to acknowledge Natalia getting this position and this in this job was was straight up like she sent a, a, a message to Ron Rivera. She just reached out. And now look, she has this role with the Washington football team. So, hey. Congratulations to her and let this be a reminder to all of us to go ahead and shoot your shot. Go ahead and shoot it. Because she, she went out there and that's what she did and got an amazing role. So congratulations to her on her role. Have you all heard Washington football team fans about the Fan Ambassador Network? Have you all heard about this? Are you all nominating each other? Are you nominating yourselves? For this Fan Ambassador Network, this is a big deal, you guys. Okay? So the Fan Ambassador Network, I don't want to get it wrong, so I have it written up here. Okay? It's a diverse group of Washington football fans who will serve as the voice of the fan base and provide perspective to the organization through the rebrand process. So listen. All y'all fans, all y'all Washington football fans, y'all some of the biggest fo Washington fans that I know, Please go on here and nominate yourselves and, and put your name on this, this chart. Do something so you can get on here. The fan base can nominate their fellow Burgundy and Gold supporters to be part of a group. Here is going to be seven crews. Seven crews. They're going to have the community crew to help define the team's presence throughout the DMV. The culinary crew, so these, this crew is going to share thoughts on in-stadium and tailgate event food and beverage. The culture crew, the culture crew to give insights on local art and lifestyle as well as team history. The entertainment crew to provide ideas around integrating areas like music, dance, and gaming. The fashion crew. Okay, to discuss opinions on merchandise and new gear, the family experience to help create game day activities that in, are enjoyable for parents and kids, and Sunday fun day to represent the crowd looking to take advantage of every minute of their weekend while also safely rooting for the team. Listen, 
Which ones do you all like? Because listen, y'all gonna go in there and you're gonna nominate yourself to go on there and be a part of the fan ambassador network. I can't do it because I'm part of media. You can do it though. That's why I said I'm going to come on this show and I'm going to plug the fan ambassador network because you need you all are some of the best, absolute best Washington football fans out there. And you need to be on this list. You need to be on one of these crews. So who's going to apply? Get your name out there. You need to apply. Okay? Who? Okay, Lash is applying for Fashion and Sunday Fun Day. Okay, please do. I want you to apply. Also, Washington Football Draft Day 5K and Fun Run Virtual Draft Day event. You can go online, go to the website, and sign up. It's happening all draft weekend. So make sure you all are signing up for that. Another fan activity. Even though it's virtual, you can still be connected, stay connected. And it's all going to be great and wonderful. You all, we saw, and now that we're talking about the Washington football team, we have seen the originator, Sherrod Oliphant, lead sports writer for Seawall Sports and Entertainment, has checked in. So y'all make sure y'all shout out Sherrod and say what's up to him as he is checking in. Um, so got all the announcements out for the Washington football team. So here's what else is kind of big and important that we that Joy and I said, you know what, what about this? So Jeremy Sprinkle is no longer a um, player with the Washington football team. He has signed with the Cowboys. I think I read that right. He signed with the Cowboys. He has gone to another NFC East team. Tight end has been a position that we have always consistently on this show talked about that needed to be beefed up, that needed to be more depth in that role. So now Jeremy Sprinkle is out. So we definitely, the team needs to be looking to draft a, a tight end, um, see who's still currently on the roster and see how that player can continue to be developed. But we're, we're down a player, down a player. And that's fine. That's okay. Um, so best of luck to Jeremy. I see some of the comments here, um, you know, but let's say, hey, we'll just see what happens. But we've always known that even with Jeremy Sprinkle, that this was a position that needed to be beefed up. It, need, it needed more to it, it needed more depth there, it needed another powerhouse there. So the fact still remains that that position we, we need some more we need some more um there now here's where joy and i started to cut up a little bit here's where because i don't think we've talked about you all you all remind me i don't think we have so we started talking about um the schedule so the schedule isn't you know we don't have the dates the actual dates of the games just yet um, but we know the opponents. So this is something that we're going to be talking about for a long time, you all. We're going to be talking about, especially once the actual schedule and the dates are released, we're going to be talking about this. But I'm going to ask y'all some comment in the chat. And see, we almost had time, but we're going to keep talking about this one right here, okay? Listen, have y'all seen the opponents for this upcoming season? I need you to check in. Raise your hand and, and, and come on, everybody. Just and be honest. Have you seen the opponents for next season? And I said, oh, ooh, okay. So Damon has seen it. Joy, I already know that you've seen it. Everybody check in. Let, it, let, let us know. Mazdaq, to, oh. Russ has checked in. Was Russ here the whole time? Everybody talking to y'all like y'all really in, in my in, on my couch. I'm sorry if I'm just now seeing you, Russ. Hello. Listen. I mean, to Demond's point, and Joy and I talked about this. Said, okay, 
I guess this is this what they get for winning the division? All right. But some of these home games, these home game opponents, I'm I don't like this. I, I don't. This is an issue. We're talking uh, NFC East aside. We're talking Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Drew Brees retired. So Taysom Hill, Tom Brady, and Russell Wilson at home. That's at the, the, that's the home games. And I said, well, that it's not the away games, y'all, that has, has me troubled. It's not, it's not the it's not the away games. The away games feels right. Feels about right. Aside from, you know, Aaron Rodgers, okay. But everybody else, even the Cowboys, okay. The Cowboys, the Giants, the Eagles, mm, one, two, three. Atlanta, Carolina, Denver, LA, you know, Las Vegas. I'm going to LA. Las Vegas. It's the home games, everybody. And Mazdak put one word up there. Mazdak, his one word was tough. Yep. I don't know. I don't, I don't. Hey, listen. I have a lot of faith in the team, but let's be for real for a moment. Um, this is hard. This is not, this is not an easy schedule. And now let me be clear. I'm kind of being a little relaxed on the away games. So I'm like, all right, you know, the away games, these are doable. This is fine. But I'm like, all right, they gonna do this at home. This is how this is how they want to act and how they want you to this at home. Okay, all right. But if ever the Washington football team wanted to make a statement, I believe that they made a statement last season because of the resilience that they showed throughout, considering that, considering all that they were up against. I will continue. To say the outcome that this team had with four different quarterbacks was amazing. You got four different quarterbacks. You had a coach battling cancer. You know, one of these quarterbacks, everybody thought he was daggone near going to die a couple years ago. So that, that was deep. That was deep. But now it's like, okay to be consistently respected. Um, this is the season right here where they want to make they they want to they want to make some noise. And they want to say we run this division. I, I that's all I can say. Because I was a little stuck. Like, hold on, I kept counting them and looking at them like, what is happening? So we shall see Russ, I saw your comment about the game. You know, one of the games may be in Europe. And some of you all may remember, I went to the London game when they played the Bengals um, at Wembley Stadium. And it was very different over there. They're very quiet. They don't like a lot of cheering. But we had fun. That was a fun, really super fun trip. Um, I didn't like the game outcome. But I think I've had something against Dustin Hopkins ever since that game. I don't want to talk about it either. But anyway, um, I would go back to Europe for that. It was fun, but the game presence isn't the same. So it's not like tailgating and a lot of cheering and all that. They don't do all that over there. So not for, not for American football. So it was taking some getting used to from a culture perspective, but you know, we were all up in there. We were hyped and it was great. It was a lot of, it was good fun. I, I definitely enjoyed that trip. So I would be open to going back for certain. Of course, we all stay safe. Um, but we're going to keep talking about this schedule because it's something to talk about. I know I, I, I told Joy that I was, I was trying not to look at it. I was trying not to deal with it. I was trying to wait until I had to deal with it 
meaning I got to talk about it on the show or whatever. But Joy brought it up. I said, let's go ahead and talk about it because I want to see how people are feeling about this schedule. And my only kind of closing remark on this schedule is if anything, if this, if they want to be respected and have their stamp and saying, this is a team to watch. This is now a leader in the NFC, not just the NFC East, but in the NFC, they need to crank this season. They need to crank. So, y'all, we have come to the end of another coaching from the couch. You guys, it is always a blast and a blessing to talk sports with you all Every single week, we will see what happens. It was kind of quiet this week, but we know quiet times don't last always in this area when it comes to sports. So we'll see what else is up to come. You all continue to stay safe, wear your mask, wash your hands, you know, and still try to enjoy yourself and live life and enjoy. But Here's to another coaching from the couch. I will see you all next week.